This is part 22 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss checkbox validation in Angular with an example. So here is what we want to do. We want to make this is active checkbox a required field. If we don't have this checkbox checked, then we want to display this required validation error message. As soon as the checkbox is checked, the validation error message should disappear. Notice we have our is active checkbox just below the gender radio buttons. Validating a checkbox is very similar to validating radio buttons and text boxes. We discussed validating text boxes and radio buttons in our previous videos in this series. So let's look at the steps required to make this is active checkbox a required field. Here is our is active checkbox HTML. The first thing that we need to do to make this field a required field is to include the required validation attribute. Next, we need to get a handle to this checkbox so we can check whether if it has passed or failed the required validation. To get the handle, we typically create a template reference variable by exporting the ng model directive. Notice we have named our template reference variable is active. Now we can use this template reference variable to check if the is active checkbox is touched and if it is invalid, then add this has error class for styling the element if there is a validation error. Notice this is active static text. This text is displayed next to the checkbox and we want to turn it to red if there is a validation error and this is the label that displays the text. So to turn it to red when there is a validation error, we use another bootstrap class and that is the control label class. Finally, let's include a span element that displays the required validation error. Notice the ngf structural directive right here. Again, we are using our template reference variable is active to dynamically add the span element to the DOM depending on whether we have this required validation error or not. So let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Now let's set the focus on the gender field and then press the tab key. Notice the focus is on the is active field now. If we leave the field without checking the checkbox, we get the validation error. If I check the checkbox, the validation error disappears. If I uncheck it, we see the validation error. Now this is not the behavior we want. We are using this is active checkbox to determine whether an employee is an active employee or a terminated or a resigned employee. If the employee is resigned or terminated, then we don't want this checkbox to be checked. But when I do that, we are getting this validation error and that's not the behavior we want. Notice the save button. It is disabled because the form is invalid. Now let's make the rest of the fields on the form valid. Let's provide a name and let's select the contact preferences phone. Notice now when I make the checkbox valid, the save button is enabled now and we can submit the form. But when I uncheck it, we see the validation error and the save button is disabled once again. This implementation of checkbox validation is useful when you want to force the user to select a checkbox before proceeding. For example, on many websites, you might see a checkbox with text, I agree to the terms and conditions. Only when we check that checkbox, the save button or install button, whatever that is, will be enabled. If we uncheck the checkbox, then the button will be disabled. So in situations like that, where we want to force the user to agree to the terms before they can proceed, this implementation of checkbox validation is useful. But in our case, this is not working as expected. What if the employee is terminated or resigned? We want to keep this checkbox unchecked and then be able to save the form. But at the moment, we are not able to do that because this required validation is preventing us. Now, one thought that might come to us is why don't we add the required validator conditionally by binding it to a Boolean expression? Let's wrap the required attribute in a pair of square brackets and then bind it to this Boolean expression. If the is active property on the employee object is null, then add the required attribute, otherwise remove it. Notice this is active property. Its value at the moment is null. And look at this condition one more time. If the property value is null, 
then add this required attribute. So at the moment, on this is active checkbox, we have the required attribute. So if that field receives focus and loses focus without having it checked, then we see the validation error. And notice the value for that property is active, it is still null. Now look what happens when I check the checkbox. When we check the checkbox, the value for this property changes to true. Now when the value is anything other than null, then this Boolean expression is going to return false, meaning the required attribute will be removed from the checkbox. So at the moment, we don't have the required attribute on this checkbox. So even when I uncheck it, we are not going to get the validation error back. Notice the value for this property right now, it's false. And we are not getting the validation error because this Boolean expression returns false, meaning the required attribute is now removed. So at this point, we should have the save button enabled, but it is still disabled. It's disabled because we don't have the other fields valid. So let's make the rest of the required fields valid by providing the appropriate values. At this point, if we look at the save button, Notice it is enabled. Irrespective of the checkbox is checked or not, we have the save button enabled. But this implementation of checkbox validation is confusing. Now, if I want to add an employee who is not active, then I first have to check the checkbox and then uncheck it. Only then the save button will be enabled. Let's actually look at this in action by reloading the form once again. Now, let's provide values for all the required fields except the is active checkbox. Notice our save button is still disabled. That's because at the moment is active field is required and we haven't provided a value for that. Notice the value of this is active property right here. It's null. And look at what happens when the field receives focus and loses focus. We see the validation error because when this is active property value is null, the required validator is attached. Since we don't have this checkbox checked, we get the validation error and as a result, the save button is disabled. Now keep in mind the employee that we are creating is an employee who is not active, meaning we want to keep this checkbox unchecked, but the required validation is preventing us from doing that. Now to be able to do that, I'll have to check this first. When we check this, the value of the property changes from null to true as you can see right here. Now when I uncheck it, the value changes to false. And notice the save button is still disabled. So for us to be able to create an employee who is not active, we will have to check the checkbox first and then uncheck it. So this is definitely confusing user interface. To make this less confusing, there are two options. One option is to use a pair of radio buttons instead of a single checkbox like this. So we use the label is active and then we'll have two radio buttons, yes or no. The second option is to remove the required validator on this is active checkbox and then treat null and false values the same way. That is, we are creating an employee who is not active. Now, when the checkbox is unchecked, we know this is active property can either be false or null. In both the cases, we want to consider that we are creating an employee who is not active. If the checkbox is checked, then this is active property is true, meaning we are creating an employee who is active. I'm going to go with the second option and remove the required validation on our checkbox. Here is the code that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.